Hello, Claire Leroy here and welcome back to my channel where I help interior designers, decorators and home renovators create beautiful homes that they love to live in and businesses that they love to work in. And we are back today with video three in a series that I have been putting together where I am walking you guys step by step through the renovation process of my Roseville project. Now, this is a project that is massively popular over on my Instagram page and so I have always, I'm always getting lots Lots and lots of questions about this project and I have been breaking it down step by step going through all the mistakes that I made all the good things showing you the budget telling you all of the details about the project and today we're into a really really exciting part of the video series which is the before and afters of the whole of the first phase of this renovation project so we today are going to walk through room by room and we are going to look at the before pictures I am going to tell you all of the different um, products and fixtures and fittings and everything that you need to know or want to know about the project and we're going to look at all the fun after pictures as well so if you love before and afters then this is definitely a great video for you to watch now if you are new to my channel welcome on this channel I create videos for designers decorators and home renovators on topics like this about renovation interior design building an interior design business SketchUp which is uh, a, something that I run a course in and many other topics as well productivity and lots of other things as well so if all of that sounds of interest to you please make sure you hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notification bell so that you can be notified when I have new videos that go up now if you have already seen the first two videos in this series then you'll know that what we're doing here is renovating a approximately 1918 Californian bungalow and we did this project in two phases we renovated the old part of the house first that bungalow part and then the family we my family moved in um, for a couple of years while we planned and did the extension part which was phase two of the renovation so we're still in the middle of phase one we are showing the before and after after pictures of phase one today and in the following videos that are coming in the next few weeks we are going to be showing the complete renovation of the or of the complete new build of the extension that goes on the back of this house so there's still lots to come in this series and make sure that you stay in touch with my channel so that you know that when those videos go live all right I am going to jump off the camera I've got lots and lots to show you in this video so let's go over and get stuck into it Okay, now before we get started, let's just recap the project that we're looking at by showing you these before and after floor plans. Now I've been through these floor plans already in detail with you in the previous video, so I'm definitely not gonna spend very much time on this in this video. If you haven't had a chance to see all the changes that I made and um, see sort of how I've approached this floor plan change, then make sure you go back and check those other videos out. But what I want to do in this video is actually just walk you through the finished project room by room and show you the finished photos of each room. So we're going to move through the house from front to back and I'm going to share all the different tips and tricks about each room, what I did, the products I used, the paint, the color, the fixtures, the fittings, um, any special sort of furniture pieces, anything like that. So I'm just basically going to pull the curtain back on the whole front part of this renovation project for you. So we're going to be moving through the bungalow room by room and basically just to quickly recap we made quite a big floor plan change to this bungalow before we moved in. So we created the changes so that this part of the house would eventually become the five main bedrooms of the um, full project once we put the extension on in phase two which is what's coming up in the next couple of videos I'll be talking you through that extension part of the project but before we could save up to do phase two we um, moved the family into this house for a couple of years and so we had to actually make this front part of the house work in such a way that it could become the five bedrooms for the main house later on but that we could actually functionally live in it for those first few years um, anyway and so this back area here in particular this bedroom five and study you'll see as we walk through the um, the different photos this actually was our temporary kitchen while we were living in this first part for the first phase and this bedroom here was actually our lounge room so we'll have a look at images of both these spaces in how they turned out from phase one and also phase two as well. 
So I hope you're gonna get lots of value out of the tips I'm sharing in this video. So let's start getting stuck into the before and after pictures. And let's start with the veranda. So basically this was, you know, the porch. And as you can see on the left here, we have the original porch when we first bought the house and then the um, finished porch. Now we didn't do an awful lot to this space. I'll point out a few features. We upgraded our full electrical wiring of the house, um, which is something I talked about in the previous video. And as you can see, I also had a new sort of box made to hide all that wiring. So that's one minor thing that we had done. We had some new wall lights fitted, which I will show you in a moment. Obviously some, um, some new furniture and plants and stuff like that. The original terrazzo floor we kept. Um, we did change the stairs leading up to this because they were all cracked and broken. Um, but we did have a little bit of damage, which I just ran out of money to be able to fix. But this would have come up really nicely if we'd had a chance to be able to actually fix this terrazzo floor up. It was in pretty good condition, so we gave it a good clean and um, basically that was it. The other thing we did though is that you can see slightly at the top here that we replaced the lining of the ceiling of this as well. I just put some V-groove under there. Which, um, which really improved the um, sort of look and feel and just made it feel a bit more fresh and modern. So, um, and then obviously we could see our shutters, our plantation shutters coming through, which also modernizes the front of the house as well. So one thing just to point out about this space just before we enter the house is one thing that was definitely a mistake that I made. Um, and this is a pretty simple error to make. And um, yeah, so what I had tried to do Basically what I'm gonna be talking you through is this tiny little raised section here at the front door between the original terrazzo stair and this um, and where we laid the new floor. Now I was very careful throughout the whole house to have the floor levels even. So we had no steps between thresholds at bathrooms, between you know carpet and step ups into bathrooms. I didn't want any of that. So the entire house was completely flush, which is definitely a more high end sort of finish for your flooring but the thing is that because we'd worked that way in we did have this issue it wasn't really a mistake it was just something that couldn't be avoided without actually um removing this whole terrazzo and the entrance and everything so because we rate we put this new flooring over the top of the hallway um, and over the top of all the existing flooring that was already there we ended up with a tiny little um, raised section here at the front door so you could put like a little aluminium angle if you want I'm not a massive fan of them so I didn't put it in it probably won't wear all that well because of that um, so it probably could do with that little aluminium angle and that would have maybe sort of improved I, I was very against putting it in but in hindsight that would be the thing that I would suggest you just put a little aluminium you could do them in black you can get them in all different colors and that would probably help this little area here last a little bit longer. So that's just one little thing to point out to you. So that is the veranda. And then let's move into the hallway. Now, as I've mentioned to you in the previous videos, this was one of the big structural changes that we made to the house. So as you can see, when we first bought the house, there was absolutely no hallway running through the property at all. And so that was one of the things that we definitely made a big change with. I rescued this archway as we talked about in the other videos from the um, between the dining and the lounge room in the existing bungalow and I popped it in here as a feature in the hallway and as you can see it pretty much looks like it always was there so it's hard to believe that this hallway was um, was once not there so that's the before and after of the hallway and here is the installation of that archway so we had to block up this existing door they opened up a nice big opening you can still see there before we break through the whole um, hallway you can still see remnants of that sort of internal living room in there as well and we've got the beam up the top there ready to take the opening for this archway and then this was the rescued archway that they then eventually installed and reinstated back into this position so you can see this photo is really good to um, show you why I didn't want this internal um, lounge room to be kept. Look how dark that space is. So that would have just been a miserable room. And um, so it was much, much better for us to just create this hallway, turn that into our master bedroom, which we'll be coming to shortly. Um, and then as you'll see eventually in the next video, in the next picture, that we eventually put this nice um, door out the back and we, um, and you had this sort of like really nice bright, 
opening. We also added um, a skylight to the back area of this hallway here, which brought in even more natural light, especially into this sort of internal space here. So the products we used here, we used an engineered floorboard and we got those from Royal Oaks Floors. They're the wide boards and they are in white smoked finish, I'm pretty sure. Um, this pendant light was from a local lighting supplier called Urban Lighting. The bench seat, which lots of people ask me on my um, social media, is from Green Cathedral, which are a Queensland-based furniture um, maker. This little trolley here, that's the Norman Copenhagen trolley, and the mirror here is from Hay. So nice little things, very simple sort of hallway, um, but it came up really well. And as you can see, I did a detail where I actually ran my floorboards um, horizontally I guess to the like against the hallway line and I did that on purpose because I wanted to have this turned board at the thresholds of each door which turned out to be a really nice detail so just think through like little things that can enhance the details of your house as you as you renovate it. Further down in the hallway some of the other products that we use so these um, door handles I get asked about all the time these are the uh, Muto the dots so they're actually a wall hooks but we adjusted them to use those as joinery handles we use some custom joinery so this was all designed by me these are not off the shelf products so you need to ask for v-groove joinery from your joiner if you want to get that sort of look uh, and then we had this black aluminium door which was custom made at the back um, and the artwork was from Penny Farthing Design House and the colours that we used, Dulux colours, Lexicon Half on the walls and on the joinery as well. So that is the hallway. Let's move to the first of the kids' bedrooms now. Now in these bedrooms, these were pretty much, we made no structural changes in here, so these were pretty much just cosmetic upgrades. So before and after picture again, it's quite the transformation even though it was just... Um, a cosmetic upgrade uh, so basically what we did was the paint we did new carpet plantation shutters we obviously rewired the whole house so we had new lighting uh, new joinery we also replaced all the skirting and architrave so you can actually almost see that I did get the same profile um, to keep it traditional so you can just see a glimpse of it here so it was the same we actually raised the skirting just a little higher because I wanted enough room to be able to pop PowerPoints into the skirting. So you can see they only just fit there. It doesn't look very nice. They, they fit quite nicely on this higher skirting. So that's something to consider as well. In the first phase of the renovation, I used this as a study. So it was sort of like a playroom for my kids or an extra sitting room and a study for me. Um, and then in the second phase of the renovation, this turned into my youngest son's bedroom. So in this room, a few things to point out. The carpet color, it's a Cavalier Bremworth carpet and it was a muir in the color Nightshade. We had, again, some custom joinery, V-Groove joinery. These have, they had these cute little sort of button hooks and they are from HK Living. The bed that I used in my son's room is from Ply Room, and then obviously the joinery was custom. Okay, so that was bedroom one. Kids bedroom number two. So this is what I already said was the lounge room when we first started, uh, when we first moved in, and then that eventually turned into my middle son's bedroom when we moved in to the house once it had been, well, we were already living there, but when we created that extension and we turned this into the five bedroom. So it was the lounge room first, uh, and then so we did again it was mostly just cosmetic changes that we did in this room but we did also um, make some changes to this fireplace as you can see so I did want to keep the feature of the fireplace as you can see but there was a little too much brown brick for my liking so I did end up rendering the top part of it as you can see I put a really nice piece of marble as the top of the mantle and then I kept the original um, brick surround of the actual fireplace it wasn't a working fireplace anyway so it was really just um decorative it's just kept decorative and then other than that it was really just cosmetic like the other bedrooms so new paint carpet we just uh we kept all these picture rails because i think they're a really nice feature new joinery um we replaced all the skirting and all of that sort of things so here you can see the renovation of that fireplace so basically the joinery was first stripped off and that left us with this issue here of how to resolve this mantle um, so that is where we decided to render the top part of that um, and then just keep the bottom part there and then we went out to this um, stone 
mason and we picked out a slab so this was the slab that we chose and we had a piece cut off to use as the mantle and then we used the rest of the slab in different parts around the house which i'll talk to you about a little bit later in the video so once we moved in in the first part this became our living room so uh, we had a tv over on the wall sort of in this section just past this chair here in front of the window um, it was quite a nice sized living room we just sort of made it work the best we could um, and it, yeah it was quite a nice little space actually for the couple of years that we lived there and then once we had done the second phase of the project and we could move our living space out into the extension this became my middle son's bedroom now my middle son's profoundly disabled for those of you who don't already know that so he obviously has his little wheelchair there um, and then he had this bed that's low to the ground. You can see I've got like a little bed rail for him. He has a completely different bed these days because he needs something much more specialised, but this was his little boy room. Um, the vintage poster, that was a gift to my eldest son, actually. My mum did a one really nice thing that on the first birthday of each of my three boys, she gave them each a vintage poster. So this is something that they'll be able to keep for life and take around with them to their different apartments and homes and things. So they're, you know, they're quite playful for kids, but you could also see this in an adult's home as well. So it's something that they each of them will be able to keep for their um, for their whole life and take around with them, which is a really nice gesture of my mum's. We also had these little book um, ledgers. I just get those from Ikea, but it's really nice for younger kids because... Uh, the spines of books don't mean an awful lot to little kids so I like to display books it sort of looks like art actually in kids bedrooms so that's a nice little idea for you if you'd like to use that one in your own kids bedrooms all right this is the third um, bedroom and in this bedroom the boys actually shared this room for the first part of the renovation because I had my study in here in a playroom we had our living room here and then the boys shared this bedroom and this was the kitchen in the first part once we'd moved all the living spaces out to the renovation once we've done that obviously each boy got their own bedroom but they um they shared the bedroom for this early part of the um while we were living here in the early part and again it was just a cosmetic renovation here uh so it was we stripped off the door architraves and the um skirting and we put in plantation shutters carpet paint all the different things that we'd done in the other bedrooms as well and this was sort of the finished um look once that it was done the joinery was enormous in this room there was so much storage so we definitely use this as a bit of an overflow for other things because one child definitely doesn't need this much storage space um, but in the end, it sort of looked like this with these, again, these cute little button hooks on it. And this was just amazing storage to have. So here's the boys with their three sort of beds when they were first sharing the bedroom. But eventually it became just um, a bedroom for just my eldest son. And this wall map that everybody asked me about, that is from Ikea. But it is no longer available, unfortunately, because apparently there's some kind of issue with one of the countries and some kind of controversial aspect to it so they had to take it off the market but i get asked about this map so so much it's um and it sells for a fortune on i on ebay these days so i could definitely make a bit of a profit off this if i wanted to which is interesting uh the cot that you saw in the other that's a stocky cot it usually has wheels we didn't have the wheels on it for that particular occasion uh, and then those joinery handles I was telling you about, they are from HK Living. And then the three boys shared this bathroom here. This was the kids' bathroom, and we'd made some uh, structural changes. This was a reasonably large part of the project of the first phase. Uh, we did a bit of a change of the floor plan. Um, so as you can see, it was a very non-working floor plan before. You walked straight in on the toilet, which I absolutely hate. Uh, you didn't really have any sort of like room for a vanity above the sink, which was annoying. So I flipped all that around. Now, I've already spoken about in the last videos that I probably would have put a bath here. I would have put like a this sort of bath, probably like a built-in bath with shower over the top. I was trying to keep it so we could wheel Hugo in his um, shower chair into this shower. But I actually probably should have put the family bath into this bathroom. That was just a mistake that I feel that I made. You have to just make decisions when you are renovating, guys. Like it's one of those things that um, you have to just make the decisions and sometimes you will make something that you regret doing, but that's life. And so that's how this worked. 
I also re-swung the door. It had the door swinging this way when we bought the house. So this made a lot more sense and made the room feel a lot bigger. You can see the doors swinging sort of into the room, which makes it feel smaller. We swung the door the other way and that makes the room feel a lot bigger. So a couple of tips about your bathroom renovation. So one thing to just point out with using a mosaic like this herringbone, I turned this mosaic around on the corner here. So I gave my Tyler a lot of strife because I wanted to have mitered edges on this corner and he had to mitre my herringbone tiles. So he was definitely not happy with me about that. I am not a massive fan of using aluminium trims, which is what my Tyler wanted to use and many Tylers will try to talk you into doing. Um, so, you know, sometimes you can push your Tyler a little bit. Most of them will say they can't mitre most tiles because they just don't really want to. But if you push them for a bit, then most of most tiles can be mitered. So just give, he took some home and he had a bit of a practice and he did a good job with them in the end. I popped some more of that marble slab that you saw on the top of this um, hob of this nib wall here. And I also put some here on this window ledge as well. And this became where we sort of put our um, you know, shampoo and that sort of stuff as well. So that became quite a handy little ledge. The power for these little wires sticking out here. I always try and stick my power for my underfloor heating. This floor had this room had underfloor heating. I try and put that into the overhead cabinet. It means you don't have to look at the ugly switches for your underfloor heating. I also put power points inside the overhead cabinets as well for charging toothbrushes or plugging your hairdryer in or whatever you might need to do as well. So just keep in mind those practical sides of renovation as well. In hindsight, I probably would have put a um, a, a vanity with a bit more storage uh, just so that the kids would have a little bit more room to store bits and pieces that they needed in the bathroom. I really like the look of these wall hung basins but the vanity with some with a drawer for some storage would have probably been a little bit more practical. Luckily we did have a linen closet that was just outside the door. You can see that here so we were able to put the overflow of what we needed from the bathroom into that linen cupboard, which was totally fine. And so this is how that bathroom ended up turning out, which is a massive transformation from what it started with. Um, I think I pointed out most things. The, we used an aged brass um, finish on our fixtures and all these fixtures were from Astra Walker. I think it's their Icon range, I think it's called. And as you can see, what I was just talking about, all the underfloor heating and the power points are inside this overhead cabinet. So that makes it really um, nice because you don't have to look at any of that in your tiling and in your bathroom. So as I said, we used the aged brass finish of the eye contact wear from Astra Walker. The tiles, these feature mosaics were from Academy Tiles and then the floor tiles and these very inexpensive satin rectified 300 by 600 matte white tiles were all from Amber Tiles, very inexpensive. And these are really nice tiles for when you are on a bit of a budget and I actually use them in almost all my bathrooms. Okay, let's move on to the master bedroom. Now we did do big structural changes here. This used to be the central living room, as you know, and the dining room. So we moved a wall from here it was pushed across to this point to make this nice big master bedroom. And then apart from that, we did obviously all the same cosmetic upgrades that we did to the other bedrooms. So the paint, carpet, the shutters, we did the new lighting and the wiring, some joinery and replaced all the skirting and the architraves as well. So here was the original dining room with the tiny little kitchen that was part of this original bungalow. And then this is what it turned into. So we've got that same window here. It now has the shutters on. This I framed out. You can see I decreased the um, size of the opening here by adding a bit more wall so that I could get extra storage in my walk-in wardrobe. And I put a sliding door. You can just see the rail of that at the top there. Um, to be able to close that off if we ever wanted to. So this bedroom turned out really well, but I did also add some additional joinery in this bedroom um, next to the bed. So you can see it just here. The reason for that is that the actual walk-in wardrobe wasn't massive. So I stole the walk-in wardrobe and my husband got the wardrobe that was in the bedroom. Both were good, both had a lot of storage, but you know, happy wife, happy life, right? So I got to pick the wardrobe that I wanted to use and he was quite happy to use that wardrobe, both of them were really nice. So having that extra bit of storage was really helpful because it was sort of like a his and hers wardrobe situation which worked out really well. So in this bedroom, we um, we also replaced in the whole house the handles of the doors. So we used these nice matte black handles from the lock and handle. I also got my joinery handles for the master bedroom from the lock and handle as well. 
The bedside table here, that's from Globe West. The artwork again is from Penny Farthing Design House. I just got a cheap and cheerful bedhead from Adair's actually. I've still got that bedhead. I am looking to think about upgrading that soon because it's getting a bit tired, but it was, you know, perfectly nice um, bedhead. And then these pendant lights were from that local lighting supplier called Urban Lighting. So then we also obviously had the walk-in robe and the on switch, which you've seen little glimpses of. So with the walk-in robe, as you can see, this was the old kitchen and that did turn into the walk-in robe. And as I said, I closed in a little bit more of the wall um, so that we could have a little bit more space for the um, joinery. So you can see I've got enough for some shoes and some tool hanging on that side now. Um, we had this annoying sort of, the window was great because it gave nice natural light, but it was annoying in that you lose a lot of cabinetry space that way. So that was a bit frustrating, but um, that's life. Now, one of the things I probably would have done if I were doing this again is drop the ceilings to just above this window height. I almost never use these top bits of the storage. Um, and so you'll save yourself money on cabinetry by lowering your ceiling. It's cheaper to just lower the ceiling than to pay for all this extra joinery. Um, and also the practicality of actually getting up there to use anything is sort of not that helpful. So definitely something I probably would do in the future. And I generally do lower the ceilings these days in um, walk-in robes that I am designing. Other than that, it's the new joinery and then just the cosmetic changes like we've looked at in the other rooms. And then let's look at the ensuite. So this was made from, I'm gonna even go all the way back to this Eric thing, cause this ensuite was made out of this higgledy piggledy mess of you know different cupboards and storage cupboards and all of these were brick walls in between so this was quite the mission to get it to turn into that ensuite room in terms of um, the structural changes it was quite expensive to do all of that but it made quite a nice sized ensuite as you can see we had a walk-in shower uh, and then we had the um, vanity here i probably again would have put some drawers if i were doing this again rather than the um, wall hung basin. I do really like the look of it, but it's just not, I could have done with some more storage, you know, for my hairdryer and all those sorts of things in that room. So you'd live and learn about those things. Uh, but it looked really nice, which was good. And again, we have our power and our um, controller for the underfloor heating inside this overhead cabinet. I did this sort of detail where I made the cabinet a little smaller and I had the herringbone feature tile sort of come behind the cabinet, which looked really nice. So I was happy with how that turned out. Now there was no room in this ensuite for a window because we were gonna have the extension budding up to the back of this wall. So what I did instead was add this skylight, which you can see through the mirror here, and that added some really good natural light. This was a automatic opening and closing skylight. So it meant that we can open it to sort of air out the bathroom and things, which is really good. But also if it starts to rain and you've accidentally left it open, then it'll automatically shut for you, which was really handy. In small spaces, I like to sort of limit my materials as well, just to keep it looking really um, simple and elegant. This bathroom was done, I guess, probably five years ago now, and it still looks like you could do this sort of bathroom today, I think. So um, it's very timeless and classic, and it will definitely last um, quite a long time in terms of not dating or anything like that. So we used these herringbone tiles. That was a feature tile on this wall here next to the shower, and I also used it behind this cabinet, as I told you. Um, and then we just repeated the aged brass fixtures from the other bathroom just to get some continu continuity going through the house uh, and put the little marble piece on top of the nib wall as well. The toilet you can't see in any of these pictures, but that was just hidden behind the door. So you can see it just here, there was a sliding door. So there's your vanity that you look at as you come in. There's the shower that you look at. So that's that wall that we've been looking at and the toilet's just hidden here behind the door. So that worked out really well. You don't really notice the toilet gave the person, people a bit more privacy or us a bit more privacy when we were in the bathroom. So the products here I've just been through. So the one thing I haven't covered, the joinery finish there was the Laminex Seasoned Oak in the Ravine finish. So the Ravine finish means that it's got that sort of more real wood look. It's not a wood product, but it, it has a bit more texture to it. So it looks a bit more realistic than other Laminex products. So that's definitely one to have a look at if you're doing 
um, if you want that sort of wood look. And then all the other things are the same as what we covered in the other bathroom. So the tiles, the herringbones are from Academy Tiles, the floor and walls from Amber, and then those fixtures are from Astra Walker. All right, we are nearly through this house. Now the back is this bedroom five, which was our temporary kitchen and then became my study eventually as well slash bedroom five we never used it as a bedroom but it definitely could be used as a bedroom if someone wanted to down the track so this was a real mess when we first bought it the floor was very um, uneven we had to replace that with all new structural flooring we blocked this window that you can just see here so that we could create our hallway and our back door and I added a really nice new big window in this area which is this one that you can see here this new black aluminium window so in the first phase we took that from being this really dodgy old um, sort of sunroom type thing and we turned that into our temporary kitchen we had our laundry in this cupboard here we had our sort of pantry and plates and stuff in these large cupboards here and then you can see everything else this was our only dining table though for a couple of years so that was a bit of a challenge we used to eat outside most of the time when it was warm but in winter this was a bit of a challenge generally we'd because our kids were much younger they generally would eat first and then my husband and i would eat later so it sort of worked out but now we've got older kids that wouldn't really work out well because we tend to eat at the same time these days you can just see the glimpse here i put in this nice um moto unfold pendant and i kept that so i'd already planned for that for my study so i already installed that and that was just like a nice feature of this temporary kitchen while we were using it and then you can see that um that stayed when we moved from this being the kitchen to this becoming my study i also really liked this black um cabinetry that i'd done so i did paint my v groove in the study black just because i really like the look of that black and it made the room feel a little bigger as well actually having that wall painted black so that's just some v groove on the wall just painted in Julux clavier was the color that i painted that so let's take a little look at that temporary kitchen a little bit um so i've already mentioned that we had our laundry in the tall cabinetry we used the remainder of that marble slab in this kitchen. So it was like the fanciest temporary kitchen you've ever seen, but there were some things that we saved on as well. So the slab was expensive, but we had to use that anyway, because I needed marble in these other parts of the house anyway. So we were just sort of using the leftover parts of that for this kitchen, but we just used an Ikea sink here. We used this um, Astra Walker uh, mixer, which I intended to take out to the back of the house anyway so it wasn't even though this is pricey i wasn't worried because i knew i was going to use it i actually ended up using this in the laundry of the extension and i got a different one for the kitchen because i didn't want the brass in the kitchen in the end but um, i definitely reused this in the in the back part of the house the subway tiles were super cheap and cheerful they were just from bunnings i just went and got bought a couple of boxes and um, the tiler just put those up quickly for me when he was doing the bathrooms these little knobs here, they were from Ikea. The, cub the cabinetry itself was all custom, but it actually wasn't any more expensive than just doing some Ikea cabinetry because I already have my cabinet makers on site making all those other wardrobes for me. So this was actually not as expensive as it looks. It is custom cabinetry, but it wasn't too expensive. I did the finish in polyurethane. It's Lexicon Half again, the color of that. These little handles at the bottom were from the lock and handle, but honestly, they pulled off almost every other day so they were a complete disaster so i definitely would not recommend getting those for cabinetry again um, but they looked nice so that was good and then on the other side of the room which you can't actually see but on this wall just behind here we had a pull out little pantry and also the fridge so that was sort of um, you can't see it in any of the photos but you can just see the glimpse of the fridge here and then it had a little um, pull out pantry as well there so it was a very functional kitchen surprisingly so considering it's quite small and we have quite a big family uh, we'd managed quite well in that kitchen for a couple of years and obviously it looked really nice There's nothing wrong with it at all. It was a very nice kitchen to work in But yeah functionally it worked much better than I thought it might have um, So it, it worked out to be a really good space So as I mentioned we used um, the polyurethane cabinetry in Dulux lexicon half excuse my um, Typo there Polly not Polly the person but you know what I mean the black cabinetry um, we just used a black melamine for that so it was very cheap to put it together I definitely would not recommend you use that as a product if you're doing a permanent kitchen it showed a lot of fingerprints there are some really good 
um, products on the market that do not show fingerprints. So if you are wanting to do black cabinetry, just talk with your joiner about the best products or with your designer about the best products to use that will not show up um, sticky children fingerprints all the time. Um, the melamine is definitely not a good option for that, but I just wanted to do something cheap, obviously, because it was just a temporary kitchen. The bench tops marble, as I mentioned, and then the mixer is the Icon mixer in Age Brass from Astra Walker, and that sink is just a cheap and cheerful from Ikea. And so then after we had done the second stage of the renovation, which you can see is now completed out here, and this is what we are going to be walking through in the coming videos of this series. So I'm going to talk you through the exact, like everything that we did with the um, with this renovation, how we planned it out, and I'll show you all the different phases of how a big project like that gets put together. But I just wanted to show a couple of features about how this um, how this turned into the study. So we've got this we, um, large sliding door here. So this would close off for my study so I could have a bit of privacy and also you could then use it as a fifth bedroom. This was my really nice outlook once the second phase of the renovation was finished. So I have this water views over the swimming pool, which was really nice. I was also able to keep an eye on the kids if they were in the pool. Not that I usually would sit in the study if they were swimming because they were still little in those days. But um, people who had older kids down the track, they'd be able to use this as a study and then keep their eye on their kids at the same time, which is really good. And so I had this really nice big desk. I still use this. This is from Green Cathedral as well. It's actually a dining table, but I need a lot of workspace um, for all different things when I was working as a designer this was where I could lay out my drawings and just sort of do drawing work as well as computer work and all of that sort of thing and you can also um, have more than one person sitting here so my husband would sometimes pop his laptop on the end and um, he would then annoy me and I would ask him to leave <laughs> but the opportunity was there for him to sit there if he wanted to and we also had this sofa left over from our living room once we moved into the second part because I bought some new sofas so I just popped that in the office and this was a nice place to sort of sit and read or do other things if you didn't want to be sitting at your desk and it looked quite nice as well. So that was the um, transformation, I guess, of the office. So if you look at the pictures of the transformation, so we started with the sort of sunroom, then we had the temporary kitchen, then we stripped out the temporary kitchen. Uh, we had to do a bit of sanding of this floor because it obviously had some water damage from where the kitchen was. And then we eventually had that turned into the office. So here's just a couple more pictures of that office space. And then some of the products used, I've already spoken to you about most of them. So we've just got the uh, V groove painted in black clavier. This chair here is called the About a Chair. It's by Hay. The dining table that I used as a desk is from Green Cathedral. Uh, the shelves that you saw in this picture here, these are from Industria X. They're really nice. Um, and they're the main products that you can see. You can always ask me questions in the comments if you'd like to know where anything else is from. So feel free to do that if you'd like to. So we have finished the inside of the house. So let's just take a quick look at the back of the house and something special that I put in the garden. Um, and then we're done with this video. So I hope you're finding these before and afters really interesting. I always love a sticky beak of people's before and afters of their design projects. And so I hope you're finding it helpful for me to talk through all the different features of this renovation project. Now at the back of the house, this is sort of like part way through um, the renovation. We had a door here that came out from that kitchen that we blocked in. Um, and then we blocked up that window that I spoke to you about in the sunroom. This was the old window of that sunroom sort of space, which I then took out and put in this modern um, aluminium window and there's our new back door. But you can see we did match the bricks, but it had, um, you could tell 100% where the new brickwork had been added. We added some new lighting, obviously, as well. I factored in the fact that I knew the renovation was coming out to this point when we did it. So you can see that the light was already placed ready for that to happen. So I was always thinking ahead to that second phase of the renovation when I was making the changes to this initial part of the house. We just left this concrete slab while we were living there in the second, um, in the first phase, sorry, just because we knew that that was gonna have to get pulled up when we went to do the, um, do the pull and the extension and stuff. So there was no point doing very much to that. Here's my cute little, I just noticed Archie, because it's so funny when you look back on these images from all these years ago, because my kids are obviously much older now. So he loved living through this renovation because he was home with me every day. And so he got to basically like watch the whole thing happen and what, what little boy does not love watching building works taking place. All right, now speaking of the kids and them being younger, let me do the last little bit of the garden that I put in, and that was this cubby house. So 
we got the just original raw cubby, cubby house installed and um, which was nice but I pimped it up a little bit which I'm going to show you and I did that both on the inside and the outside of this cubby house. So um, basically what I did was I actually put power and lighting and a TV inside this cubby which I'll show you in a second and we obviously also painted it to sort of match the aesthetic of the house as well but I would not recommend getting a cubby house for your kids. My children they, when we went to the cubby house shop to buy this thing, they of course spent two hours in the cubby house while we were there, arming and ahhing whether we were going to get this thing. And of course, as soon as we got it, they probably spent like one day or two days in it. And sometimes when they had playmates with playdates with their friends, they would go out there. But other than that, this cubby house rarely got used. On the inside of the cubby house, this is what I eventually did to it. So I lined it with gyprock. I painted it, I put in a TV, we put in some power, we put in some lighting. It was really, really nice, as you can see. All their toys were sort of stored in these um, cabinets, which were just from Ikea. And this is probably the only time they ever went in there. So even though it had a TV in there, they still didn't go out there. So this was obviously, I did this um, internal renovation of the cubby once we'd done, or as part of what we did with this um, renovation, you can see it's all completed through this through the windows here so this was the um, second phase of the renovation but um, yeah the kids just didn't use it they just didn't use it I don't know what can you do but I would have used it. I started thinking maybe I'll move out there I'll get away from the kids and move out to the cubby house anyway but that's what I did just in case you have got kids who you think would play in a cubby house there's just a little bit of inspiration of how you can make that tie into the aesthetic of your real house and um, make that look really fun and inviting for the kids even if they don't use it. Okay so that's been a really full tour of phase one of this really big project and in the next video we are moving even further into the house and that is to the phase two part of the project where we added in this massive extension. So we've done the full bungalow now, we were living in that bungalow for about two years and from the next video, I will start to explain the process of how we engaged an architect and we got this whole um, second part of the renovation happening and built. So I'll show you every phase of how this got put together. I've got images of, um, you know, completely from scratch all the way through to the finished product. And I'll be walking you through all the steps of that entire renovation process for that back extension of the house. So if you're interested to see how construction all comes together on a huge project like this, and also talk, let me talk you through some of the mistakes that we made and how you can avoid some of these for yourself, then definitely come back next week and you can watch the first phase of that uh, renovation project and then after that I'll obviously also be doing the full reveal of all the different photos of that back extension so the phase two part of that project as well so there's heaps heaps to come in this video series and I'm also going to be adding some other videos to my channel which is new as well so if you have enjoyed this video please give me a thumbs up because it really helps me to get picked up by other people who are on YouTube this channel is just starting out and your support would be um, greatly appreciated. So thank you very much for that. And if you would like to make sure you don't miss any of my other videos that are coming, make sure you hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notification bell so that you can be notified when the next video comes up. So thanks very much for watching all the way to the end of this. I hope you've enjoyed and got a lot of value out of this video. Enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you next time. Bye for now.